back for 2018. We just want to say a quick thank you for listening last year to our our first year. It was a lot of fun. Um, this is sort of a project that we've been thinking about for a while, and so we finally got it up. And we're just a lot. Uh, we're just thankful for you all uh, listening. Um, all right. I'm Keith. It's Travis. And I'm Kyle. And this is producer Josh. Uh, so welcome to What About This, episode 13. Today we're going to be talking about um, some of the recent news. Um, last year there were a lot of celebrities and a lot of really high profile people that were accused of some really terrible things. Um, and even recently in the first couple days of 2018, we had a, a fairly famous YouTube personality um, get in trouble for one of his videos. And so the question today uh, that we want to tackle is, um, what is sort of the responsibility of the viewer or the consumer when it comes to um, approaching the project that those people who have been accused of terrible things were involved in? Um, so a couple of the examples that we're thinking about, like one was last year, Kevin Spacey was accused of sexual harassment. And uh, one of the, his upcoming movies, All the Money in the World, was reshot in like a month to remove him from the project. Another one was Logan Paul, in the first, again, this is a few days ago, was filming in Japan and um, produced a pretty insensitive video. Uh, and so he came out with apologies. He did the apology tour. He did the whole thing. And, and there's some backlash against his work. So the question is, what is our responsibility? What should we be doing with, with these types of uh, things that we, we hear about? Don't everybody talk at once here. Yeah, right? I think jump in. I, I I think well let let me let me flesh let me flesh out and then jump in flesh out a little bit more of wait let, let's if, in case you haven't seen the Logan Paul video do you want to someone want to describe yeah, what it, it was? Yeah, it was you can't it's already taken it's already taken down off of YouTube so don't you can't YouTube it. Um, basically, what it is is they are going to this forest in Japan that is known. Uh, for people going and committing suicide. I don't know if people really know why. Um, that's, that's just, it happens to like be a thing there, um, like in this forest. And so they were going, originally planning to like spend the night in there because they thought it was going to be like spooky, which it seems like it would be. Um, and they, as they're walking in, like in the video, it's daytime. And they're walking in, and they probably walk a hundred yards in, not super far, and there is just a body hanging there. <clears throat> and they walk like right up to it. They're filming within like the face is blurred out, but they're filming like like a foot away from him, and they're like, "Oh man, this like must have like just happened." And then the 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 first sense that they do is like, you know, like this is so sad, like you know, get help and and these types of things. And then it like cuts to almost like like would you say it's like like B roll or something where they're they're talking and like all of a sudden they're like oh you never like stood next to a dead body before and they're yeah, like wow. yeah yeah well he's like he starts out legitimately like panicked about it like right. he's 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 like oh my gosh I've never seen anything like this and then they cut to the part where he's it, it's, he becomes the YouTuber again almost like outtakes yeah like, almost, yeah it seems like where they're like <laughs> they're laughing and kind of like making jokes about it and they're like but then in the laughing they're like no 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 but like it's serious. And it just seems very awkward. And it's like, no, 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 we believe you. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. Like, it's like they're saying, like, no, 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 but it's serious. And you're like, everybody else thinks it's serious, man. Like, yeah. So that's what the video is. I think that that's where things like took a turn right there was he because he you know he knew he's gonna get views for that and you you put and and the the sad thing is like his audience is it's not people with ethics it's it's teenagers it's it's, you know (laughs) well well, said here's here's the big part of that too um, is I know when when I saw um, the whole thing was Logan Paul I just happened to be visiting my family, my wife's family in Wisconsin the week before. Um, and my nephews that are seven and 10 tell me that they watch Logan Paul like every day. Mm-hmm. So it means that like my seven and 10 year old nephews potentially saw that video. Yeah. So then, cause obviously he's done the whole, like he's done, he released the apology video and there's going to be some backlash and I don't, old man Keith doesn't know how like, whether he has sponsors or whatever, like I don't know what the repercussions for him are going to be, um, but obviously he's going to lose some sort of 
influence revenue, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'd say he says he didn't monetize the video, but right. he monetizes all of his other videos. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. And he like sells merchandise and, and he's obviously going to lose people like like you said there's going to be families that find out about that and they're going to keep their kids from seeing his right like a, like absolutely but, so but the thing about the celebrity so, world is you reinvent yourself and it really doesn't matter in apologies a part of the culture right right and, it, and we we dismiss it as soon as do you know how much money he made off the apology video over twelve thousand dollars yeah, so the question, I, the, one of the Check. questions is then so like... He, so he monetized the apology video? Right. Yeah. I'm sure he did. Yeah, he monetized it. Yeah. So the question is, like, what are we as viewers supposed to do with this now? Like, are we just going to... Travis, you were talking about, like, do we just straight up boycott this person? Like, do we boycott these people who any project that they were ever associated with... Well, that's do we erase the debate. them from the like? Do we erase yeah. them from the past? Like, what do we do? Uh, especially with the the Kevin Spacey thing. Like, he's been in a lot of really great movies, and just I just we just want to make a clarification. Like, we are not talking about whether or not. Like, we obviously all think sexual harassment is a very serious thing. We think that if he is, you know, that we should sort of listen to the people who are accusing and like listen to all that and Absolutely. do all that. The que- so I don't want to say we're setting that aside, but the question is, well, what do we now do with? The, the, the what is of our work responsibility of, of someone who is part of that? What is our responsibility? Right. And to kind of expand on the, the question is right. is where where do we come in with this whole? Okay, so the Kevin Spacey or even politicians and right. uh, what's the uh, filmmaker recently? Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein yeah. um, so you go. Okay, can I never watch any of their work? Right. Um, should I never watch their work again? Um, is watching their work, is endorsing their work, right. endorsing them, therefore endorsing their behavior? And so what ends up happening is, what ends up happening is, is we get in this debate and this discussion about, well, am I never going to watch American Beauty again because Kevin Spacey did this? Well, I don't know. Should you, should you not? And I think really... What we're asking is, is, and I think what a lot of people's heart cry is, is stop endorsing these guys because you're perpetuating right. the, these issues with these guys in power and this fame, and they end up, they end up continuing to jump back into these roles or these positions in life that continue to allow them to perpetuate such things such as sexual harassment, right. whatever. And so, can I enjoy a film? some psychopath serial killer made yeah if it's good i can enjoy it i ha- you can you can so that was a great film mm-hmm. but so that's not really the question right. right we know we can enjoy something that right. somebody made who did something terrible and i think we start getting into the fact that um most people would you know they look at somebody's actions their behavior and they go i would never do that right. or we start we get into the comparison game and we do that stuff so this isn't a, a way so that uh, we can figure out how we can feel good about ourselves still watching right. those right. films. But the question is, is um, having to decide that. What is right. the responsibility? Do you boycott it? Mm-hmm. And does that make sense to do that? Right. And so that's really, I think, what we're trying to derive out a little bit. Right. Even like with that, the Logan Paul right. thing. Or, like that's what I think about, like, <clears throat> like for example, a movie like, like the King's Speech, where you're like, dude, it's such a great movie. Like, one best picture, amazing story. It's a Weinstein Company film. Great. So it's like this. So the question is, like, sounds like what you're, what you're proposing is, so, like, can I not watch the King's Speech anymore? Right. Well, but, then what I think, too, is, is that there are so many more people involved in, in putting that film out than just the one guy, Harvey Weinstein. Not to say he wasn't a crucial part of it, and if it weren't for him, it would never have come out. But, like, then am I to dismiss everybody else's work? Like, it's it's a little bit different with something like Logan Paul, right? Because he's right. a singular entity. He he's is the, the like, driving the only force. only one who right? benefits from that. Right. And, oh, I'm sure he has a team and all that, but, sure, like, it's, but like, his. Let like, me, it's his, let me ask like, you this real quick, though. Do you think that YouTube celebrities should be held to the same standard as Hollywood celebrities when it comes to that? Uh, well, here's well, do uh, you mean when it comes to the repercussions or when it comes to the behavior itself? When it comes to the behavior itself, because these yeah. like YouTube celebrities are really just regular dudes and women that picked up well, cameras and started doing stuff. Well, but, but it's then, a different, but, so it's the a question, different medium. So right. then the yeah, question yeah. is, should we hold everybody to that standard? Yeah, or because not? we then, just, yes, which is yeah. which is yeah. to the point, which is to the point, and and before I forget about this, is so much of the debate revolves around. <clears throat> 
monetary <clears throat> gain. Right, right. And that's the bigger problem. The bigger problem is that we start talking about, well, like, look how much money this guy's making off this film. Stop, stop paying him. It yeah. seems, it I don't seems think like that's the whole. The money is the whole thing, and that that actually is a bad argument, right? Because it just all it's doing is it is exposing mm-hmm. our highest value in our culture, right. and even even your question, which you probably didn't really think through, Josh, was <laughs> should they should those celebrities be held to these celebrities? Because but you, the reason you ask like that is because that's exactly how culture is. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. how it right. is. Right. And then it goes, no, yeah, of course, because they're human. Right. So there aren't lesser humans, but what we do is we give certain people power, and that's why these things continue to perpetuate. It's kind of like Noam Chomsky's whole thing on he was going after the misuse of power. Right. And really, that's a huge debate. And so, yeah, if you want to throw in the money thing in there, yeah, it has a lot to do with the fact that you continue to give those who have the most money have the most power. Right. Well, and that's for the most part. And the idea that. Power is not just simply what we think about, maybe, maybe I would say it politically, right? Where you hold the most influence over someone by way of law or by way of institution. Mm-hmm. Power is a much more diffuse problem that this is exposing, obviously, on some level. Um, because here's, I guess here's the question. And... and these are all, this is all disclaimer, meaning I, I, this is not, I'm not, I don't have any proof of any of this, but let's say like the third key grip on, on the oh. King's speech was also sexual harassing someone. Should we now not watch that movie because of that person was doing it? Like, and, but we'll just never find out because that person is a name on the screen that scrolls by at the very end of the movie, right? Is it, is, and it doesn't mean, this doesn't excuse Weinstein's behavior, but it puts it in the question of like, why does his abuse matter more than others? And I think to your point, Travis, is that it's because he was in a position of power that abused people that were um, in a in a position to not more vulnerable, yeah, state. vulnerable that to not really def- be able to defend themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So I think then we're talking about power. If we're talking about that, the real question is not whether he made money off of it, no. but how did he abuse the position he was in to to hold that over people. Well, yeah, because part of the discussion on all in, in all sorts of areas are if you buy the King's speech, you're now putting money back into this uh, <coughs> perpetrator's hands, uh, this, this guy's bank account, mm-hmm. and you're going to continue to fund his his art and his work. So, so and then, but so then, the, if we if that's the case, then say he's removed from all of it, he will never make another dime from these movies. Then what? Right? Do we still feel like we're endorsing? that behavior by watching something he was a part of. I think I think it becomes really complex because it's like at what what is the point at which that person has been removed far enough from it, the the power that he abused to to begin with, the money that he's gonna make from it, all that stuff. At what is the point where where the, where's is there, and this is I think for me, an interesting question. Where's um, the line? Where is the separation line between art and artist? I, I think the thing with Weinstein is complicated though, because like he he defined a, a, an entire era of movies. Like, if you were to watch no Weinstein incorporated movies, like, the 90s would not have even existed pretty much. So, like, even someone like Kevin Smith came out and said, like, hey, I'm sorry, I know, like, Weinstein funded all these films I made, Clerks right. and Mall Rats and all that, so I'm going to be giving proceeds from my profits from my movies to, uh, you know, abuse organizations and people right. who have uh, suffered like that. But, like, it's hard to boycott and, like... Like you said, it's hard to boycott someone who because a producer is head over everything. Right. So, like, if you boycott a producer, then like the you might there's nothing to watch. Right. Well, not only that, but then you're boycotting some really good people and artists that like produce some really yeah, important yeah, work. So, well, that are, like that's right. right. Like and it's pushing pushing boundaries of, of conversations that we want to have. Yeah. So, so, so but it's, well, it's, it's a hard. It's, so so the thing is though the the pushback would be would be okay. So producer or people. Right, and so right. you go who no. because because producers give me art and I can't think and go outside and think my own thought. I need to sit in front of a TV, and so like the <coughs> pushback would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So hold on. So then, therefore, it's okay, right? This is going to be the pushback, right? Right. And so we yeah. go. N- so I think it's no. So I I think the that's why it's about hey, this has to stop. 
this position has to right. This position has to be carefully. It's like you need a board. <laughs> to, yeah. <laughs> to, make, to make sure this lunatic guy that. But here's the, that's what happens. But no, with but power here's, the, here's the real problem with that is that what we re the real problem with the Weinstein thing, not the real problem, but one of the other real problems was, it wasn't just that he was doing it; it's that he had a whole team around him covering it up and and making sure he could keep doing it so he could keep making the money. So there was a whole bunch of people covering it up for him, like that knew about it. It was called, several people, have, you know, lots of people called it the open secret in Hollywood that Weinstein was abusing women. So it's like, yes, you need a board, but what happens when the board is complicit? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because they're also gay from it. That's why there's no, uh, what is it, it in, in any sort of like research because there's such a desperation to get it uh, published and everything right. and that to skew the results. The, the people who check the results aren't in the same field right. because if it's full of a bunch of scientists, those scientists go, yeah, 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 yeah. And instead, they could bring out outsiders and go, no, that's not what it says. Right. That's not what it does. Right. And so it's this real, this, this accountability. But even to turn, turn around and say, I'm going to give a bunch of my money to abuse organizations, is that's not going to help either if he's not changed. If he, he has to change. You know what I'm saying is right. is I, I think I don't know if they were saying if he would do that or no it Kevin was Smith Kevin Smith because Weinstein produced like most of his movies so not he wasn't saying that Weinstein would give the money Kevin Smith was saying any money he made from those movies that Weinstein produced would be going towards those organizations oh so okay so he so, was kind of in so some he was saying like this is what I I I I was even if I didn't know about it even if I wasn't like protect like protecting him I was in some way complicit because he made movies for me okay. And so I'm gonna don't, I'm gonna make sure the money from those movies doesn't go to me. It goes to organization that helps people. Abuse. Okay, so that that that's the guy that goes. It, we made the we made the art piece. Right, right. And I'm saddened by this. How can I even though say I didn't do anything? Because right. he's recognizing that obviously he's still gonna make money off of it because people are still gonna right. keep watching. Yeah, yeah. Here's well, okay. Here's, what, here's my last my last thing before you jump in is is the problem that we all face is it's always going it because it's a, it's a matter of ethics that all mm -hmm. we're talking about ethics right now right, right. is as long as i can justify watching it in my head i can just you know what i'm saying if i can yeah. distance myself from what this person did because my desire to watch or to listen or to whatever endorse this because right. i for some reason can't let this movie go mm -hmm. what we end up doing is we distance ourselves from that person and we start to we convince ourselves that it's okay because I want to. So it becomes a matter right. of, of, well, I want to do that so I can look the other way. Right. And so that is a central mm -hmm. like issue within this topic sure. is people pick and choose the same way, you know, it's the, oh, it's family. Oh, it's family. Right. Like, well, that's interesting because like, all of a sudden you're in the mob now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's, what I've been, here's what I've been wondering throughout this whole, as I've been seeing all these allegations come up and then through the allegations all these boycotts um and not that it is not an appropriate response i think uh but here's i guess here's the question i've wondered i'm trying to make sure i say this the right way um why why this issue why was simply this issue the means or the vehicle for boycott and what i mean by that is um, and not to not to go to like nail on the head, but for how many generations have we had like artists putting out music that is like super profane and super derogatory and super violent and super uh, I mean like you could call it unwholesome right and it's more degrading right yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying like 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 really like rough like towards women or like we have I mean it, it, if we're being honest it's hip hop is what is talking the most about like violence and thing and things like that and right. and drug use and but we, well they're the mo I would say that I would only say this they're the most explicit I sure mean, that's what roll right right right, right, right. That. and I'm not and I'm not that's why I was like I'm not gonna sit here yeah. and be like it's right. rap music no right, it's like right. all kinds of music <clears throat> right but of course that's like the first thing you think of right of course. um and and so I go but like for example like this is gonna really like date me I guess <laughs> nice. um like 50 Cent was talking about right. that. Like, I remember, dude, I had the album Get Rich or right. Die Tryin'. And like, there was a song on there that the whole beat 
was a gun cocking and shooting and it was all about how like like the line yeah. of the song was like catch you catch you slipping i'm gonna kill you and i remember yeah. being like a 13 year old me like that's right that's right <laughs> and, and like <laughs> and he was like dis- yeah <laughs> but like the whole song is him like describing like how he's gonna kill these people so, and then but then he made four more albums and we all bought them so like, this you becomes, know what i mean yeah so this hits this starts to hit home a lot closer to what i do um, so I, the, some of the books I teach are old. Mm-hmm. So I teach, I teach books from pre Civil War America regularly. What do Is I do? Is that like Goosebumps and Harry Potter? Yeah, or? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, R.L. Stein. Say oh. cheese, <laughs> say cheese and die, Josh. Yeah. Dude, yeah. don't even, you guys don't know about Goosebumps. Um, <laughs> future episode, Kyle, yeah. fine. You're right, I don't. I was reading real books as a kid. <laughs> R. L. Stein probably heard you say that. <laughs> um, so, so I, I, you know, you deal with books that regularly deal with attitudes, racial, atti- racist attitudes, like that. That the attitude of not just the book, but I know for a fact the author towards African Americans is horrible. Yeah. But the book is exquisitely written, and it's it's part of one of the greatest. You know, it's part of the great literary tradition of our country. What do I do with that? And I have this conversation regularly with my students, but how do I separate that? Even someone like Mark Twain, who was a little bit more for his time progressive and Huckleberry Finn and all that, but like still... But not all the way. Not all the way. <laughs> yeah. Not in a way that we would consider appropriate now. And you see people like banning it or not wanting to read it. But the question is like, at what point do I, when I'm going back and I... For my students to be literate in American literature, they, they need to read some of these books. As difficult as they are to read sometimes. It's like, at what point do we start to... Do do, and I don't want to say like our values, but our ethics today influence what and how we and who we read before. So, yeah, Fifty Cent said in the most white way possible. Fifty Cent. <laughs> Fifty Cent. Yeah. So like, yeah. So back then, it we didn't maybe have the awareness, or we didn't think about it as much as we do now. Mm-hmm. But a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, how do, what do we do with this information now when we find out not just that the art itself is the problem, but the artist is the problem. Classic example, I am a huge fan of Hemingway. He was a raging alcoholic, mm-hmm. a terrible misogynist, likely a racist, right? Yeah. So it's like, but his work is beautiful, even though it contains those elements in that. I can read it. When I'm reading his book, I'm not like, yeah, this is fine. I'm like, no, no, that's you should not treat a woman that way. Yes, um, but I so, still enjoy it, and I not just enjoy it, but I sometimes I teach it. Should I stop teaching it? Should I just erase him from my syllabus? Well, let, and, let me oh, real quick. Let me ask you this: Do you think that all uh, like brilliant minds are prone to some sort of madness, some sort of? Well, uh, I would say ev- all minds. Yeah, I would yeah, say, mm-hmm. it, exactly. All right, so here's so here's what I was gonna. A, you bring up the fifty cent. That's interesting, right? Because. What we do in our head is as long as 50 Cent isn't – each time he cocks again, he actually didn't kill anybody. Right. Right. So it's it's further away. But we also know that is – what that is doing, it is perpetuating a culture. It's definitely influencing. Yeah. Whereas the, the right. Weinstein thing is like it's right there in your face, hands on. We could see it. Okay. <clears throat> right. And, and I, mm-hmm. I guess one of the questions that you just said with perpetuating culture, are we more okay, – like – that, that music was perpetuating a cultural style, right? Mm-hmm. A, a cultural attitude, maybe a stance, right? Yeah. Maybe, well, in, maybe, in, but maybe, influencing but, young minds yes, it is, who are but, around uh, certain... Right, but, but Weinstein was promoting an actual physical toxic culture within a company that yes. produced physical, mental, emotional, and psychological mm-hmm. abuse. Mm-hmm. E- exactly. And, so, and I'm not saying that... that the music can't produce that. What I'm saying is we have tangible evidence yes. that Weinstein produced that. Exactly. We don't have necessarily tangible evidence. There is a big debate in <coughs> the social sciences, psychology, about influence of like video game violence and music yeah. violence. Like we, there's no way to say that that – there's no correlative. There's no saying like this for sure produces that. Exactly. We have evidence that what Weinstein was doing, not just in his, like his own behavior, but probably in his company produced yeah. – some pretty toxic things. Let yes. me let me walk you guys down a rabbit hole scenario real quick. So say starving artist, okay, he looking for his big break, writes a screenplay, and the only person that's gonna mm-hmm. buy it is someone like Weinstein. And he's yeah. offering you you go from 
having nothing and he shows you a check for like two million dollars what do you do in that scenario well, see, and this is why what Weinstein did was even worse because he was in a position to do just that to make you as a person compromise your ethics for your money he was that was the that's the real that's the nature that's, of Hollywood because you often buy like but that's right that's the real like that. sickness of what happened is that there wasn't maybe there wasn't another choice Maybe he was just throwing money at them. Was he? And the question then becomes: Was he just buying these scripts to make good movies so he could continue to? Well, this is there, there's a, there's a reality to your question, Josh. In in Hollywood, in fashion, in mm-hmm. photography, and all these these guys who become um, like these figures, right? You know, they have they have this perceived power. Meaning, so even a lot of uh, young models. They think these guys will use their power and they'll say, you have to sleep with me or I'm going to ruin right. your career. There's a reason well, the casting couch is a trope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so you go, well, that, that guy can't ruin your career, but he's, he's playing on your right. insecurity and what you think he can do. And so a lot of times, yes, this is happening, this is happening outside of that, you know, it's like, right. If and you do this in advance, if you do this, right. you know, I'm making an advance right. for an so, advance. So then the pro- I think this question gets gets expanded to, like, are we only boycotting someone like Weinstein because we know about it? And that, then that knowledge, to me, I see that and say, well, he can't be the only one. Mm-hmm. And so then mm-hmm. it's like, do I just stop watching movies? Do well, I just stop? Bill enjoy- Burr has a whole thing right. on, on, on athletes and do I stop watching football, that team, because right. that guy just got charged with... Right. With domestic violence, and in the moment, everyone puffs up their chest and, and slams their hand. And I said, "I will not." And you're like, "No, but you do." And so there's another. There's another. I'll, I'll throw another thing in there about this discussion is when it comes down. I, there has. I think something has to be done, right? right? So right. that's obvious. I, yeah, and then that's where this conversation is coming but, from. But where? But where? But where? I think the problem. The problem lies in um, when we look at someone like Weinstein or we any any sort of issue like this. Right. Is, and do we endorse or do we stop watching? Do we never right. do we do you never teach Mark Twain? You never right. read Hemingway? Do you never do any of those things? It, it starts to become very foggy <clears throat> for right. me because what you're saying is there's no good in them at all, and you're right. saying that you're all good. Right. right. And and. So do we? Yeah, how many people watch um, documentaries? <laughs> he's he's dead, but on Hitler and, and the Holocaust, right. and I, I believe the History Channel just changed their name to the Hitler Channel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But they had a lot of World War II documentaries like ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Dude. That was pretty good. I don't think that's an original joke, just to let you know. Mm. So yeah. I don't know. Well, you, you, you heard it here it. first. We're uh, yeah. copywriting it, TM, TM, TM. <laughs> that's how you copyright things. But we, we all kind of have this in us. We want to hear about, learn about. Right. And mm-hmm. and then, you know, it's it's like, oh, if so-and-so right. was an adulterer. But he was just an adulterer, so that's fine. I could watch his well, stuff. Yeah. So-and-so is, you know, he only killed one person. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's again, that's a little bit, Kyle, to your point. Like, th- this happens to be a really serious thing, and it also happens to be a very relevant issue now. Yes. Right. So it's like, and I'm not saying that that, does, that one diminishes the other, but you know, I guess I guess the, the fact that 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 become that's now a thing, like oh, sexual harassment and awareness of it, and like, and trying to, yeah, that's that ten years from now. Hopefully we don't have to deal with it as much, but that but then another issue will be more serious. So it's like, right? Like I there are other things that people are doing that we're not paying attention to. Yeah, so. like I'm, I'm not saying one or the other is like more deserving. I'm more asking like why this and not this. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, well, and the interesting thing, and I think this can go back to I'm I'm thinking of an athlete, but it can translate back to, you know, I guess whoever. Uh, but you have like. Someone like Ray Rice, who was the running back for the Ravens, mm-hmm. uh, who got caught in domestic abuse, like pretty like excommunicated right. from the NFL. Right. No teams will touch him. And so I guess this would go towards like a Kevin Spacey thing as well. And this is like I'm not I'm not thinking one way or the other. I guess I'm posing, asking, yeah. asking the question. Um, so do, does he never get to play again? 
And well, like, and like, does, so does Kevin Spacey? Like, at what point, if ever, does Kevin Spacey get to make another movie? Okay, so here's the question: In what other professions, if this behavior was happening, right, would they ever hire you back? In what in what other professions? <coughs> yeah, do these things? It's the they're the untouchables in yeah. society, and I think that's the bigger problem. Right. You have the Ray Rice. You're like, K- yeah. Like, why, because it's football well, all of a sudden, do we forgive to, to a fault? Because I right. guarantee you, if you were a, a grocery clerk at Vons, you probably wouldn't get but, hired at Lucky's. So, you know you what I'm saying? Lucky's? Yeah, I do. That is a, that was a throwback. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because they don't exist. I remember <laughs> going to Lucky's, man. Yeah. Um, but then, th- this then goes back to our sort of one of our places we started is that. This is ultimately about power. So by cutting Ray Rice out of the NFL, Mm -hmm. I think what's really happening is that the owners are protecting themselves from being able to stay in power, right? Right. They're they're not doing it out of some sort of true moralistic thought, right? They're not just saying, like, I can't stand that behavior. Because they have guys on their roster that they know. They probably have all the guys on their staff. They probably have friends that, like, they know that... And they're still friends or they still, like, employ other people. So So it's, it's, it's more about... What what is the minimum amount we have to do yes. to keep Be- this going? Because here's what's, right. here's what's interesting. Uh-huh. And I think part of it, too, is just like, to be honest, I don't know, likability? Right. Because, because here's what's the thing. So Ray Rice, domestic violence, excommunicated from the NFL. Des Bryant of the Dallas Cowboys, domestic violence, also charged, <laughs> found, like, found guilty. It was like he was abusing like his mom. Or something like that. Jeez. Um, still playing. He's a starter right. for the Cowboys. So and so you go right. why? And so I guess that this yeah. goes back to my overall theme of of why this and not this. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, that, that that's where it, that's where it gets. You go. Okay. So um, I I, over, <laughs> I was listening to this uh, this very topic being discussed, mm-hmm. and it gets this this person saying like, Hey, at the end of the day, is is I'm not going to stop listening or watching this because I like that. I like it. I not even I like the person. I like the I so so it was almost like Weinstein needs to be excommunicated because I don't like his films. But the next person that's just like him is right. I like their films. So now I'm torn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm torn. It's the it's it's the it's the it's the blood thicker than water thing. It's right. it's all of a sudden you stand for something and then all of a sudden, someone in your inner circle is doing. You're like, "Hey, man, we really gotta, you know, we gotta lean in and support, and we gotta help this person through this." Or, or even, I'm gonna look the other way because I really like you. Well, and to I think, Kyle's right, point. and I think that's the even look. You look at sort of. It, it seems really cynical, but you look at the response of, to to simplify a whole industry, Hollywood, to the wine scene thing. Like, obviously, ninety five percent of them are like completely distancing themselves from those people. People are like, "Oh, I knew all along," and. I was afraid to not say anything. He was going to... Like, all this stuff. They're they're distancing themselves. And yet, there's very little effort. There is some, but I, there's very little tangible effort that I've seen to guarantee that something like this won't happen again. How far... And, and it's... I, I think because a lot of people that are in... They're, they're doing it so they can exercise this from them. Meaning they can say, like, well, Weinstein is out while still perpetuating some very similar... If not the same, the same use of power and abuse of power, even if it's not like sexual abuse, sexual abuse right. yeah. on the scale of him. Of him. Yeah. So they're, they're saying like, well, we've gotten rid of him. It's like, it's like if I have a mouthful of bad teeth and I pull the worst one out, I'm like, no, but my, my teeth are fine now. I'm like, no, man, like there's still a bunch of rot in there. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you not taking, you just pulled the worst one out. That doesn't mean you've solved the issue. So I think a lot of it, the same thing with the, like the rice thing, like, you choose one person as an example to say, I mean, it's the old, it's the old, the literal scapegoat, right? Yeah. The tradition is you would <laughs> pile your sins on an animal, send them off into the desert, and that was a scapegoat, right? Mm-hmm. You would literally sacrifice a single thing to absolve the entire community. And it's like, well, that doesn't necessarily work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how, are, I should, how far? Are pictures and illustrated scapegoat. <laughs> How far do you guys think an apology should get somebody, though, in the case of like sexual harassment? Mm, I, I, mm. 
I think <coughs> I think there has to be a a true consequence. Because yeah. forgiveness, because forgiveness isn't a isn't An doesn't need to be or blind. Word? It's well, not blindness. But uh, but forgiveness is also not based on consequence. what they said or their con- the consequence of it. So whether we as a as a culture have decided to forgive Weinstein or not is is a separate question from what should happen to him. Yeah, meaning like that doesn't just because you can forgive somebody doesn't mean that you need to allow them near. Right. And, and allow them to continue to do. I mean, this is why right. year after year, because of human beings, say in the, these professions, in, in all sorts of other professions, this happens as right. well. These yeah. just tend to be the god of our society, right? And so mm-hmm. you go, you go, but there's no true consequences year after year. Mm-hmm. Like if it, it, that's why. What is I think is is it Indonesia or Tahiti or something? Is like you if you still you Indonesia, die Indonesia, or you, yeah. so so the crime rate's pretty low. You get caned. It's, <laughs> it's pretty it's yeah. pretty low, uh, and and so I'm not <laughs> suggesting that. I'm just, yeah. I'm what I'm saying is though, but, if guys knew in the NFL like, hey man, um, if if you're you're bossing drugs, the the drug, like it, it's right. in all of these things is if you got if if you took a drug test. And you have cocaine or whatever in your system, you're fired. That's it. And in these in these situations, you go, yeah, but it's football. You're like, what? Why is why right. is why are guys in tights the <laughs> the exception? Right. And there's just another there's another guy just as good as Ray Rice. Just get him. Right. Right. Let this guy go work somewhere else. But also, they it, now you're getting into also how do we like how do we as a society. Take that person mm-hmm. and go. Hey, rehabilitation, change. Right. Um, you need to. But no, there's all these other well, people that are like anger management classes, well, and, and you the, need to do this. Well, and then to me, the other thing that strikes me is like there's a there's a real disingenu- disingenuity. Is yeah, that the way you'd say that. Yeah, disingenuity of the demand for the apology and rehabilitation because the rehabilitation. The demand for that is not about the person. It's always about the person asking, right? In in when you see this in popular culture, like if someone is demanding that Weinstein gets reformed or rehabilitated, it's for them. There's no real sense that they care about him. And I'm not saying they should. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I think we should all sort of find empathy for even the worst among us, right? Because they're all ultimately human, right? And that their flaws are our flaws on some level. So if you're gonna ask, like. What I would want for him is like to be truly transformed. Like he really needs to do some soul searching and like find what in himself pr- prompted the behavior. But I don't need that to happen for me. No, it's, I'm fine. I don't need him to be re- rehabilitated so I can feel better about the world. Right? That's not. And I feel, but I feel like that's so much of this demand for apology and and. But and but, for, but like, is this? It's this. It's not about. But it's not just, true forgiveness. It's just like you need to get better for me. Right. Mm-hmm. No, right. yeah, you, no, it's it's we need to want him to get better because he's human and because right. he's harming other humans. And, and so right? Yeah. And that's the only way that the system itself is gonna be reformed. Would, would is, you is would you feel that way. would you feel better if he about him working in the future if he went to prison? I, no, I don't no, know because that it would prison's matter. like a pri- prison's not a, not a solution necessarily. Sure, but it, it. I think if he will, if he came out tomorrow and said, "You know what? I'm going to accept the fullness of the consequences for my actions, whatever that means. I'm not going to say it means this or this. I'm just going to say whatever happens. I admit to this. I did all of this. This, this, and this. I'll give you the evidence. I'm going to give it to the legal system. Whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. I think I would start to feel better then because well, that well, shows so me he's even willing apologies. to. Not, but that's, no, no, no. no. I'm yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. You know, even well, other apologies within like sports and stuff, it's right. kind of like, hey, man, or you know, um, I said this on the Grammys, or you, right. they go, hey, here's what you need to do. Right. You need to go up, you need to apologize, and so now we'll spin it. Right. We'll use it to our benefit. It, it's it's hard to know what's genuine because well, it's very formulaic too. I'm like, going to say none of it's genuine. Yeah. Because it's all about getting them back on the field, back in the in the room, back well, in, so the, here's, in the so pre- so production here's, chair. It's, it's funny that we're we're in this because. The other day I was talking to a buddy, and I said, you know, when someone changes, it's not confusing. Right. It's not confusing. You know. Right. You, you know. You know. And, mm-hmm. and I, have, I, have a, I have so much 
experience <laughs> with that and, and yeah. seeing someone I go just wait you'll know you won't have to ask you won't have mm-hmm. to guess you won't have to wonder you will know and this is why even I always go I'll know you loved her when you die because right because then I'll know because mm-hmm. I won't be asking you more if you truly love her because once you're dead we'll know you know, right. you know I keep, well you know with that question you know who I keep thinking back to it's funny because I'm like not that savvy in like the entertainment world but i am very says the guy uh, who worked has worked like the SBs yeah and the grammys but, and the oscars but i much I, I follow much more closely the sports world yeah, yeah. and i think about like um like michael vick mm-hmm. who is what it was a rare case that you go man an nfl superstar is going to prison right. like yeah. he's going to prison and I, maybe it's just me and maybe this is to do with culture and things like that too but he was in prison for a couple years it's like 18 months something like that yeah Yeah, I'll I'll say that I'll say this to your question about prison is that was for dogs right yeah the sad reality is like that he went to prison for dogs well over like how many people should be because of what they're doing to humans right right I love dogs but (laughs) But they're not but they're not humans (laughs) but they're not humans Um, and so and so but for me like I, and I don't know what this says about me or what. I don't know. But so he got out of prison, got a second chance in the NFL. And I, I think along with most people went, okay. Like, yeah. like in that, like yeah, no, he, you're right. he went to, and I don't know, maybe, yeah, I'd say maybe that's culture rubbing off on me, but I like felt better about him going back to the NFL well, after having been like in prison. But also to Travis's point, the way he conducted himself post prison, it wasn't confusing. Right, right. He seemed so. I'm not saying that prison would. I'm saying what I'm saying is prison doesn't. It's an option. It doesn't (laughs) automatically guarantee that he comes out of that process, right? Thinking differently or behaving differently. But he's definitely not dogfighting anymore. That's no. I mean, I'm talking about Weinstein. Like, (laughs) obviously, there was something that happened with Vic in in through the whole experience that profoundly changed him. It seems right. Right. Again, I don't know the man personally, but it just seems like it did. From what the fans can see. Right, and what, what and, you know, obviously it seemed very different. But, and, and so maybe that's, the, maybe that's the thing, maybe that's the rock bottom that Weinstein needs to change. Because, mm-hmm. again, all of this for me is less about whether he ever produces another movie again. I don't really care about that. Right. The, the question for me is, are we going to get one more person, one more human being on a different track than the one they were on? Mm. Right. That to me is the more important question. Yeah, abso- right? I don't absolutely. I don't ultimately care about his career. About like he could lose it all. It doesn't has no impact on my life. But as a person on Earth, as someone who participates in this strange thing we're calling life, um, I want one more person to start to be better. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. That 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 would be <laughs> Keith is just giving a TED talk right now. <laughs> I know. Give him eighteen minutes. Um, he. Uh, it's it's why you have celebrities who should be in jail, but they go before a judge, and they go, you know, the the prisons they're crowded, right? Um, so we're gonna let you go, right? We're gonna fine you an insignificant number because it's not gonna touch your bank account, and this is just the way power in a, right. in a if you will in a broken kind of messed up right. world that we all have, yeah. we are all part of, and we all do little things. Mm-hmm. But it just continues to go. You know what? It is a. It is a, It's a question of power right. and what you what you'll do with with your power. Right. Because the other option is okay. He goes to jail. Right? Say his he he can afford a a really good legal team, and they get him off on the smallest of charges, and he goes to some club med prison, and he has enough money to you know, have all this luxury in the prison. Like. What have we done? We've just sent him to a slightly less nice resort than he's used to. Yes. Right? What have we really done with him? So to me, that there is there is there is something to be said about the, the legal and justice system in, in the United States and its ability or its inability to do something, right? To to rehabilitate someone. I, I'm not someone who subscribes to the fact that prison guarantees someone is a change of heart. In sure. fact, there are statistics that show regularly it goes the other way. No, yeah, because right. so that's, it's like, because prisons don't even get yeah, prisons yeah. are a business. Which is a so. whole other topic we could talk about. Yeah. Let me so. let me, <coughs> so let me let me kind of give my my final thoughts here on what, what this is. The um 
So Max Landis, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He wrote super uh, a couple uh, some Superman comics for DC, and he wrote Chronicle that Josh Trank directed. And we, um, we do not know this. Bright. Guy. So he wrote Bright, the n- recent Netflix film. I watched that. And okay, so recently he has been accused of sexual harassment. Now that his name is is like out there in the news right now. So do you guys? I have two questions. Do you guys think that? You know, we should wait before we jump on this bandwagon. Do you think that we should wait till it's proven that somebody has sexually harassed somebody? Because you have all these people seeking attention, and do you think that this be, all the, like this sexual harassment movement or anti-sexual harassment movement is going to really change anything? I I get here's here's what happens is sometimes when you see when you see sexual harassment <coughs> accusations popping up really quickly, the 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 skeptical part of me wants to go. Well, you know, like you want to go, are people just doing this to like get attention? And then I think that's very dangerous because I go, because then I go, but like as, as much as part of me wants to like wonder that I can't, that would then be like me taking the side of the possible, uh, accuse. And I think, and, and I quickly realized like, yeah, you can't think like that. You have to like, I think, I think what is more likely is that one person has brought something to light and more people are now feeling comfortable. Well, and then here's my other, yeah. here's my thought on that is, um, until, uh, so situations like this rarely happen between two groups that are in equal amounts of power. Um, so the people who are accusing and the people who are accused are on unequal yes. levels of power. Like in every time. Almost every time, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously there are certain cases where it's not, but just generally speaking, the, even if it's as, an, a, it's an issue of physicality right right abuse tends to only not always but it tends to majority of the time cross from someone in power to those someone not in power so until and from usually from men to women and usually from men to women and so until the group who is accusing who has been in a historical position of lesser power has some sort of equanimity brought to their to their group right so in this case until women as a group are allowed to have as much equal power as they can to men, I am always going to err on the side of letting them speak first. Right. Because they have historically been kept from speaking in ways that are unimaginable to me. Sure. So I I am not in a position to say, let's wait to see where the facts lie out. That doesn't mean that I'm going to automatically say legally that that guy is... A sexual assault, a sexually assault, sexual harassment, right, rapist, right. whatever. But initial because that's a, that's a different question. But I'm just not gonna say we're gonna wait. I'm gonna say you get to you get to say you as the accuser get to say your piece. Mm-hmm. You get to say what you need to say, and if it turns out that it's false, that's gonna come back on them anyway, right? We've seen that happen, right? The Absolutely. the famous, the most famous case is the Duke lacrosse team, right? They, those men were exonerated because the woman came out that she... There was obviously lots to it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But yep. came out that what she said they did, they didn't actually do. And that came out. But to say that we're not go- we're going to stay, take a step back and wait until the facts come out is only something that I, mm-hmm. as a person in power, get to say. Because the facts and the system will always favor me mm-hmm. until it right. changes. So until yeah. the system changes to not always favor me... I'm not gonna be the one that says I'm not gonna listen to you. Dang, Keith. Nice. That's a good. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good landing. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did it. Amen. I got nothing to say. After <laughs> yeah, that. me neither. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh, again, thanks for listening. Um, uh, this is when are we? Gonna, this one's coming out soon, right? Yeah, this will be up on Monday. You can find it on Podbean, iTunes, uh, Google Play. We're up on Stitcher now. Um, Podcast.com and. Podcasting outlets around the globe. Do we have a MySpace? <laughs> As always, follow us on we Twitter can. at what about well, no at w a t underscore podcast and f- Facebook like, uh, and follow us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. All Thanks, right. guys. We out there. <laughs> All right. Let's get. Brink here from Super BS, talking about the things you know you love and the things you'd love to know. Join us weekly for a podcast about video games, mostly. <laughs>